very good morning and welcome to Command Your Morning. My name is Pastor Elijah Waini, an associate pastor at Praise Chapel Mombasa under the leadership of Bishop T. Naro. And I must thank God for this opportunity even as we share the word this very morning. But before we do that, let's bow down for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Thank you because you are our God and our Father. You are our faithful King. And Father, besides you, there is no one else who can compare or measure to you. We thank you this morning because, Lord, this is the day that, Lord, you have made for us to rejoice and to be glad in it, O oh God. Thank you for what you have in store for us today. We know that, Jehovah God, great things, Lord, are happening today. And even now, they are happening, O oh God. We thank you because you have gone ahead of us today. And you have reveled every of our mountain. I pray for my listener and my viewer this morning. The Lord, after this particular program, their lives will not remain the same. So, Lord, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. One more time, welcome to this broadcast this morning. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope and I pray that this program has been a blessing to you. And thank you for keeping it at KTN. Thank you so much. I want to read the scripture. Uh, to read a subject of what I have entitled Your Kindness. Your Kindness is an Investment. Your Kindness is an Investment. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 9 verses 36. We begin from verses 36. The book of Acts chapter 9 from verses 36. This is what the Bible says. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Stabida. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died. And her body was washed and pressed in an upstairs room. Rida was near Joppa. So, then, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Rida, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dolcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened up her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for, for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with the tanner named Simon. This is an account of a, a lady called Tabitha, and Tabitha interpreted means Dorcas. And in this particular story, we see what I am calling kindness, kindness at work. Tabitha, the Bible says, she did good. She helped the poor, and she gave to everyone, especially to the poor. Many a times, and allow me to speak to us, because many a times you've been generous. Many a times you have supplied the needs of others. Many a times you have extended a helping hand to a brother or a sister. And to some, to some extent you think it doesn't pay to help. It doesn't pay to be generous. I want to submit to you this morning. And I want us to look at the story of Tabitha. Because this was a widow. The Bible says she was a widow. She was a faithful disciple, the Bible would say. But she was a widow. But this widow decided to do something extraordinary. You know, with the ritual that she had, she would share. And this morning, I want to encourage anyone that is listening to me to realize and discover that that which that you share, every time you sacrifice and share to a friend, it is an investment that you are making. Every kindness, act of kindness that you have ever offered to a friend, it is an investment that you are making. Now, Tabitha, the Bible says, she got sick at this point and died. And at this point, the Bible says that she was washed and cleaned and she was taken to an upper room. Something I want you to discover. 
every time a man rests or a man dies, the catcher is they are washed and taken to a morgue. But in this particular case, in the case of Tabitha, they washed Tabitha, the widows. The Bible says the widows washed Tabitha and they declared that this one we are not burying. Now, there's something I noticed with this particular scripture. M many a times when the normal human, human die, the, the, the normal human beings die, they are taken to a morgue and burial ceremony is arranged. And as fast as they can, there are even uh, religions that you know you can't even stay for 48 hours. You are buried within 48 hours. And you know the rest of the things will follow. But in the case of Tabitha, the widows are saying this particular one, we cannot bury. Why are they saying that? Because as we will realize, they discover that, you know, on this particular one, we must exercise faith. Tabitha cannot die now. The Bible says they sent for Peter because Peter was nearby. And when Peter came, Peter is taken upstairs. What meets Peter upstairs is amazing. There are widows holding sweaters and they are telling Peter, you know, I am paraphrasing. We are ready to bury Tabitha. We are ready to bury this one. If only you can show us who will be doing this to us, who will be doing these kind acts to us, who will be doing sweaters for us, who will be supplying Unga for us, who will be supplying, you know, that which that we need will be helping us, will be helping our children. If only you can give us a replacement of Tabitha, we are ready to bury her. I believe Peter looked at that, looked at the sweaters, kind of sweaters the widows were holding, and Peter discovered this one is irreplaceable. This one we cannot replace. I came to challenge you that sometimes in your hour of need, there are people who will start guard and fight for you. You helped them when you didn't even think. You sacrificed when you didn't have. And you chose to be a blessing to them. There is a time you will be requiring support. There is a time when you will be in need. And God will bring in people and say, this one cannot suffer as we watch. This one helped my son. This one helped my family. This one helped my business. My business was almost sinking. And he came through for me in my hour of need. I will stand up for them. I will declare you know that this one cannot close their business. I will stand with them in your place of work. There will be an hour where you being fought and one person that you helped will say, you know, I saw them conspiring. Just, you know, just somebody standing in and saying, you know, I saw them conspiring and this man has done, has done nothing wrong to deserve this kind of a judgment. People will begin to fight for you. Your case will begin to be fought for you when you are not doing anything effortless, people will begin to fight for you. The case of Tabitha is unique. The case of Tabitha is amazing. These widows are telling Peter, you know, we are ready to bury her. But show us who will be doing the kind of acts Tabitha was doing. I want to challenge you as I challenge myself. That in the area of giving, in the area of supplying the needs of others, it is always an investment. In the first place, it seems like you are wasting out. You know, it didn't work for Tabitha until she died. She kept on, you know, doing the sweaters. She kept on helping. She kept on doing good. She kept on caring for the widows. Until Tabitha died, that is when her kindness is paying off. The thing is, while Peter was looking at this, he discovered, the Bible says, uh, Peter went with them. And when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Tabitha had made while she was still alive. Peter sent them. Peter discovering that this is a unique case. Peter discovering that on this one I'm not winning. Peter discovering that on this one I must exercise my faith. Peter sent them out and he calls Tabitha from the place of death. I have in the previous uh, 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 preach on this subject and I have told people you know most of the time and I have asked this question who would stop my burial you know I have asked this question if I was to buy to die today who would stop my burial what are the kind of acts that I'm that my, I am doing and you know people in a burial site you know they cry for different reasons some will cry because 
you know, you died with their, with, with, with their own. And you know, there are many reasons why people cry in a barrier site. But who would genuinely cry because I had touched their lives? And this is the word. Let's begin and continue to touch people's life by supplying their needs as small as it is, as much as it is. Let's carry on the lesson of Tabitha. Carry on the legacy of Tabitha. And you know, say, you know, despite my inadequacy, I don't have enough years, but I will share the ritual that I have. But I will share the ritual that I have. And you know, the Bible says, when this happened, Peter discovers that, you know, on this one, I must recall her from the place of death. This one cannot die. It is not yet time for Tabitha to die. She can't live now. How am I going to still convince these people that God loves them? While God has taken the one that they love. While God has taken the one that has applied for them many years. And you know what? The Bible says Tabitha was resurrected. And the Bible says she was given back to the widows to continue doing the acts of kindness. The Bible says in verses 42, uh, verses 40, 41, he took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called all the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. This is it, and this is interesting. That sometimes when you help people, sometimes you can even help people who will not even say thank you to you. Sometimes you can help people, and, it's, and, and, and you know, you, you are left without anything. You know, in seasons where you are called out, called out to share, you may give out to people. You may give out to men and women who may not even come back and tell you, thank you. But wait a minute. Tabitha was rewarded on her deathbed. Tabitha was rewarded while she was dead. Dead. And you know, the widows are saying, this one cannot die. Maybe for all the time, Tabitha was doing the robes. Tabitha was doing the sweaters. She never imagined that these widows would stand for her. These widows would vouch for her. But the thing is, her good acts, her kindness, which was an investment, they kept, she kept on investing. She kept on in depositing. She kept on depositing. And then it came a time for her to reap every of her investment. And I can tell you, for Tabitha's case, it, pay, it paid big time. For Tabitha's case, it came through, uh, and God paid her had summary. It came through for her. Tabitha was repaid in a big way. And I want to submit it to you this morning. Sometimes we do good. Sometimes we help men. Sometimes we help people out there. And it seems like nothing is happening. There is a story in the Bible. Let me connect this with the story of Jonathan and David. The Bible says that, you know, when David was called to become the king, Jonathan was next in rank. But Jonathan decided to stand with David because Jonathan knew that the hand of the Lord was upon David. So Jonathan stood with David. The Bible would have it, because I'm, I'm paraphrasing because of time, the Bible would have it that long after Jonathan had died, long after the father Saul had died, David is asking, is there anyone that is left in the house of Saul that I may show them kindness for the sake of Jonathan? For the sake of Jonathan, is there anyone in the house of Saul still remaining so that I may repay the kindness that I was shown by Jonathan, who was rightfully the heir of the kingdom then, but chose to leave the kingdom for me then. And there was a man. The Bible calls the man Mephibosheth, who was rim in both of his feet. You know, the Bible described Mephibosheth as one who was rim in both of his feet. The Bible says that, you know, Mephibosheth lived in a place that was forgotten. And in that place he was brought and brought into the house of the king. And, you know, when Mephibosheth was brought, every investment that was of soul, every investment that was of his grandfather was restored to him. A man who was rammed both of his feet, the wealth is restored to him. Why does this happen? Because there was a kindness seed sowed by Jonathan to David. And at this point, the kindness is being repaid 
to the son who is Mephibosheth, who is ram in both of his feet. And the Bible is very clear that you know Jonathan, no, Mephibosheth ate and dined at the table of, uh, uh, of, of, of David at that point. You know, he, he fellowshiped, he ate there. And all the, the servants of the servant who was, who, was, who was serving Saul became his servants after that. The Bible is clear that you know every good act that we do today. And I want to submit it to you. Every good act that you are doing right now, it is an investment. You are making an investment in due time. The Bible says, let's not, not to get weary in doing good. Because in due time, we shall reap a harvest if we do not give up. Every good thing you are doing now will pay hard summary. It is an investment you are making. It is a seed you are sowing. And so keep sowing good seeds. Keep planting good seeds in the lives of many. I will tell you for sure, it will pay in due time. Just like it did in the days of Tabitha. Just like it did in the days of Mephibosheth and King David. It can happen even in your days today. I want to pray for you. You who have given and you are giving up now. You are giving up giving. I want to encourage you. Give this one still. Amazingly, those, God, those who God has given the burden to give, it burns inside us. You know, it burns within you to supply the needs of others. Become the stream and you will never lack. Let me speak a blessing upon your life today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the many Tabithas who have been listening to me this morning. I thank you because these are men and women who have given their resources, who have stood with men, and sometimes they didn't even come back to say thank you. Father, I speak a blessing upon them today. I thank you because you know them by name. You know their acts of kindness, the investment, the kind of investment they have done. May this investment yield for them a hundredfold. I thank you because, Father, you know them by name. Remember them at, during this season. Remember them in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to thank you so much. And maybe you are there and you have never given your life to Christ. I want to give you an opportunity. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I have heard your word. And this morning, I want to surrender to you. Forgive my sins. Remove my name from the book of destruction. Write my name in the Ram book of life. And from today, I am born again. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you made that prayer, please go ahead and look for a Bible teaching chart. And you know, grow in the word and the Lord is going to bless you. To all of us, I want to wish you a good day. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord go ahead of you. May the Lord every level, every of your mountain, may he bless you going out and you're coming in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.